Do you ever find yourself looking back at old pictures of family vacations and getting nostalgic for all those sweet memories for simpler times? What kind of sorcery is it that allows us to conveniently forget how blisteringly hot it was waiting for hours to ride one coaster at an overpriced amusement park? Or how the baby cried the entire plane ride while sweat dripped down your back and people stared? How you fought with your spouse while the kids complained incessantly? It's a phenomenon common to humanity, the idea of the good old days, which look better and better the further we get from them. Don't get me wrong, for the most part our vacations really were filled with beauty and laughter, but our minds like to paint pictures that don't quite reflect the moments themselves, like editing a photo with an airbrush filter, selective amnesia. The same phenomenon happens to me around the holidays. Maybe it has something to do with the build-up, all the lights, the music, special recipes and decorations. But I tend to preserve those days in my mind like magical Hallmark movies, free of spots and blemishes. And yet every holiday, I still have at least one crashing down to earth moment. Something inevitably goes wrong and things start to unravel. The particulars change, but that sinking feeling is so familiar. Even a little insignificant hiccup is magnified in this season because the bar is set so high. The expectation is perfection. And don't we do the same thing with life? We tend to carry subconscious expectations of perfection into every situation, evidenced by our reactions when things don't go according to plan. Theoretically, we know that a personal utopia is an impossibility. We understand that trouble comes and life isn't fair. But when the roadblocks show up on our streets and the pain hits close to home, we're never truly prepared for discomfort. There is a reason though why we expect perfection. It's because we were made for it. We were wired to be homesick for the garden. But I wonder, while we're here waiting for heaven, if it would be better to expect grace instead. Sometimes grace comes like a beautiful gift wrapped in shiny ribbons and bows. At other times, it's simply the ability to just keep breathing. Grace can show up like a huge God hug when we need to know he sees us, or even a supernatural strength during the moments heavy with disappointment. For believers, that's what life is, a blend of good and messy, ugly and beautiful, just like our vacations. But when we reset our minds to process life according to grace, we don't need to pretend the past was perfect or be crushed when the future isn't. We can appreciate every magnificent moment in real time as a gift and learn to see every obstacle that pushes us toward Christ as a gift too. The more we understand the heart of our Father, the more we can confidently, humbly, and eagerly expect and accept grace.